Hi, I'm Jonah McDonald, and welcome to Living History. I'm the author of Secret Atlanta, a guide to the weird, wonderful, and obscure. And today, I'm gonna take you on an adventure all around the South River Forest. Today, I'm at one of Atlanta's most brand new parks, the Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve. And we are gonna begin our exploration of this area that people have called the South River Forest, a giant span of forested land throughout Southwest DeKalb County and Southeast Atlanta. Let's go see what we can find inside Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve. Quick tip, there's no lake. <laughs> We're gonna go on a hike though. Come on with me. This is a fantastic forest. The Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve uh, was slated to be a dump. Yeah, a landfill. There's a waste management facility just over there, but City of Atlanta decided to use their tree ordinance funds to purchase the land and protect this tree canopy and turn it into a park. Well, there's plenty of history here, but the first thing we should start with, of course, is why is it called Lake Charlotte? There was a lake, a man-made lake. But then, in the late 1970s and early 1980s, during the era of the Atlanta child murders, there was a body found on this property. And so officials drained the lake, fearful that there might be other bodies here too. So it's still called Lake Charlotte, but it's not a lake anymore. But there is a beautiful forest a wood thrush is calling in the distance. And oh my gosh, this is a beautiful beech tree. Gray, smooth bark, limbs spanning in all directions. And then over here, this is a tree I really want to show you. Super unique to the Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve. Come on. This is a shagbark hickory. Take a look at it, looking right up the trunk. I wonder if you can figure out why it's called shagbark. This is a super unique tree, partially because of how the bark peels off in these kind of layered plates and shags, but also because shagbark hickory, it's just not very common in the Atlanta metro area. But here at the Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve, it is everywhere. There's one there, there's one there, and of course there's one right here. There are lots of kinds of hickory trees. There's uh, bitter nut hickory, mocker nut hickory, pig nut hickory, and shagbark hickory. Most of the others like living down close to water, but these shagbarks, they love being on these rocky slopes. Hmm, rocky slopes though. It happens to be that we're right on the ridge known as Soapstone Ridge, one of the major geological formations here in the Atlanta area. More on that to come later. So here at the Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve, we are right next to one of the most important waterways in the Atlanta metro area, the South River. The South River is what the South River Forest gets its name for, and the South River Forest is an area spanning 3,500 forested acres, all in the southeast portion of Atlanta and the southwest portion of DeKalb County. The South River flows through DeKalb County down to the Okmulgee River, into the Altamaha River, and eventually into the Atlantic Ocean. Along with the Chattahoochee River, the South is one of the two major watersheds here in Atlanta. The purpose of the South River Forest is to protect this gorgeous area of green space for the enjoyment of Atlanta's citizens and for the protection of its forest canopy and the animals that thrive in this area. But the South River Forest hasn't always been a place where just animals and trees thrive. This is the ancestral land of the Muscogee Creek people. 
And in 1821, uh, the federal government strong-armed the tribe into ceding all of the land east of the Flint River. That land became DeKalb County, and then the land was divided up and doled out to uh, white men as part of the land lottery of 1821. You could put your name in a hat, and if your name was pulled, you would get 202 and a half acres of land. Forget this, $19. Once the land was divided up and sold off in the land lottery, most of it became farmland. But this land right here has been free of farming for a long time and it's allowed much of the native forest to begin thriving again. But it's important to remember that even though this land is a public park today, that there is a long and, and difficult history in the past. One of the things that we know about the Native American presence on this land is that this place, Soapstone Ridge, was utilized by Native people 6,000 years ago to create bowls out of the soapstone found in outcrops along this ridge. More about that later. So where are we going today? We are gonna go on an adventure throughout the South River Forest. It's not just gonna be all tree hugging in nature. <laughs> Instead, we are going to go to the site where elephants are buried. We're gonna to go to the last active outdoor drive-in movie theater in all of the Atlanta metro area. We're also going to go to a place where bricks were mined and made. And finally, we are gonna check out a multiple thousand year old archeological site. And we're headed right now to one of my favorite parks within the South River Forest. It's called Constitution Lakes Park. Welcome to Constitution Lakes Park. And now we do some off-roading in the city. We're gonna go on a hike here. But we're gonna go on a hike in search of history. The history of soapstone bowls, the history of the South River Brickworks, and the history of a strange little trail called the Doll's Head Trail. Let's park the car and go walking. This is Constitution Lakes. Fantastically beautiful place. It draws fishermen, it draws birders, nature lovers, but there is deep history here too. In fact, we won't even start with the lake. We'll start with that ridge of land there in the distance. That is Soapstone Ridge. 15 square miles of raised land on the south banks of the South River. And it's called Soapstone Ridge because as far back as 5,000 years ago, native people knew that they could go quarry soapstone from that ridge. Soapstone is important because it's a stone that is soft enough that it can be easily carved into implements and in particular into bowls. Soapstone was taken in giant slabs and traded all across the southeast. Soapstone from right here in DeKalb County has been found as far away as Louisiana. These giant slabs of stone being carried that far, that tells you how important it was to people. Well, we'll talk about it more and we're gonna try to go visit a archeological site that is a soapstone quarry. But now I wanna tell you a little bit more about why this lake is right here. This lake was not built to be a lake. Instead, it was a place where red clay was dug up out of the ground and then fired into bricks. 
This is the site of the South River Brickworks, one of the two major brick manufacturers from the late 1800s and early 1900s in Atlanta. The city of Atlanta was booming, and in order to build those buildings, they needed brick. And so, the factory was created right here on this site, and clay was dug, and more clay was dug, and more clay was dug, until it created a giant pit. But that's not the whole story. The South River Brickworks used what they called free labor. <laughs> that doesn't mean that the labor itself was free. It meant that the people doing the labor were free. In contrast, the Chattahoochee Brickworks, owned by James English, a former mayor of Atlanta, used what they called convict leasing labor. And as you can probably imagine, he didn't pay his convicts hardly anything at all. In fact, it became a giant controversy in which some people were saying, you need to have free labor. And some were saying brick should be done with convict labor. So what was convict labor? Well, exactly what you'd probably imagine. There were all these laws passed that entrapped African-American people. Over 90% of the convicts that were used in this convict leasing system were African-American. And then those convicts were then pretty much rented out to private businesses, such as the Chattahoochee Brickworks, where they could then make bricks for pennies on the dollar. The advent of convict leasing labor depressed the prices of bricks for everybody. But the South River Brickworks, they didn't have the ability to pay their laborers a very tiny amount, like Mr. James English did at the Chattahoochee Brickworks. By 1915 or so, the South River Brickworks had declined and declined and declined until finally they went out of business by the 1940s. So what happens when a Brickworks goes out of business, leaving a giant pit in the middle of the woods. Well, it fills in with water. The river overflows, the rain comes down from the sky, and this beautiful lake comes into being. It became, in 2003, a DeKalb County Park. And now it's a space for everyone. All right, check this out. This whole hillside right here is just discarded bricks from the South River Brickworks. Amazing. All right, <laughs> that's pretty creepy. And don't worry, it's not all like this. But welcome to the Doll's Head Trail at Constitution Lakes. After about you know, 40 years of uh, you know, four-wheelers, uh, fishing, people just using this forest as their playground, um, once it became a DeKalb County Park, there was trash littering the area. And one day, after the 2008 uh, recession began, uh, a carpenter named Joel Slayton, well, he was a little low on work, so he just started collecting all the trash in the park, and he found a wide variety of stuff, including dolls. And he began putting together sculptures in the woods with little, you know, pithy sayings on them and uh, sometimes, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit, and it caught on and people began flocking to Constitution Lakes to collect trash and then make art <laughs> here in the woods. So let's walk this short little doll's head trail loop and see what kind of strange things we might see. One thing we'll definitely see is lots of leftover brick from the South River Brickworks. Let's check it out.
<laughs> so I'm a sucker for a good pun, or a bad pun, especially one that doesn't involve dolls' heads. Constitution Lakes, Springs, get it? Springs. <gasps> this tree in the center of the doll's head trail, well, this used to be one of the biggest willow oak trees in the whole city. Now it's just a stump, but the stump has been used for artwork that describes the history of this property. History that you now know from the soapstone quarry to the South River Brickworks to now a public park. I hope you come see the Dolls Head Trail, but remember the history of Constitution Lakes sometime soon.